TikTok seems to be the place where content thievery happens all the time. I'm sure you've been on TikTok and seen someone talk about someone literally copying and pasting their content word for word. I'm not just talking inspired by, I'm talking like word for word copy imitated. For example, there's a user on YouTube who literally copies my face every chance he gets. We're going to be talking about two content creators today. We have Sydney Gifford and Alyssa. I want to say Sheel. I hope that's how you say it. Here, okay, I haven't seen this. So this, I know what it is. So get ready to be annoyed. But let's have this explained to us. Sydney and Alyssa. Sydney has like 400 something thousand followers. And I think Alyssa has like 200 something somewhere in there. Well, apparently Sydney and Alyssa met up a couple years ago and they were going to like shoot content together and like do a collab. And I guess they shot some stuff. And then a few days later, Alyssa blocked Sydney and then started posting all kinds of shit that looked just like Sydney shit. Oh, Sydney is like one of those aesthetic creators. She does like the neutral beige cream vibe. And so her whole entire, like all of her content looks like that. So apparently Alyssa started to shift her content to what Sydney's looked like after like she blocked her and started to steal her shit. Okay, so recap, right? Sydney and Alyssa were friends, we think, way back in 2022. They went on a photo shoot together to, um, to collaborate where some kind of argument happened that resulted in Alyssa um, blocking Sydney. So then after this, Alyssa then went on to post very similar content to Sydney, as well as having um, a similar Amazon storefront, right? So this is Alyssa's account. Very, you know what, she's, it's, it does look beige. She's just standing in a beige room. Who doesn't have, I have beige walls, they're only blue because they're lit up, you know what I mean? Like it's very, just someone standing in their house. And then this is Sydney's. Again, she just happens to have white walls and white furnishings. Like everyone's bedroom pretty much when you can't be able to decorate it. It's mine, it's white. But they're very similar. But then so is like multiple hundreds and thousands of other people. Everyone does that clean, white, crisp aesthetic. It's not new. It's been around since the beginning of, of what's called social media times, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the two accounts. Alyssa on the left, Sydney on the right. Just, it's just the same. <laughs> it, it, but it's not overwhelmingly unique. That's the issue. It, it, like bag layouts, a Christmas tree, um, Amazon slouchy suede boot. You see this stuff all the time. There's nothing unique here where I could be like, you know what? That's, that's what Alyssa does. That's what Sydney does. You know, it's, a lot of people do this content. Honestly, it's very boring. It's not my thing. I don't look at this and think, wow, I wish I could purchase from Amazon. You know what I mean? It's not unique. It's not thought, um, thought through to a point where you could claim it's yours. Again, it's nothing where you would look at it and be like, wow, that signature Alyssa, that signature Sydney, because it is just so, no offense, boring and regular. It's what everyone does. However, if you go, for example, um, to, I'm trying to think of someone, but I can't think of someone. Let's make someone up, someone's TikTok and everything they do is green. They have a green wall, a green background. They only buy green. Then it's like, yeah, that's their signature. It's very green. This is just anyone. Nothing to be precious about. So Sydney sees Alyssa's content somewhere down the line, isn't happy, and decides to sue her. So Sydney has um, two main grounds that she's suing on, right? Sorry, I'm reading this. Copyright infringement. What copyright? And trade dress infringement. So, so just to be clear, copyright infringement occurs when someone uses or copies a copyrighted work without the copyright holder's permission. It'll be interesting to see what part of that beigeness is copyrighted. Yeah, logos can be copyrighted. I'm not sure a lifestyle could be copyrighted. Trade dress infringement occurs when a company uses a similar design or packaging to another company's trade dress. That makes sense. So, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where, looking at, you know, the, the two content creators, what they would be be able to copyright or claim is, is their own. So Sydney claims that her branding, her style, um, her color schemes, and especially her Amazon storefront layout is unique enough to be considered trade dress. Sydney, please, no offense, because I'm sure you look wonderful in what you wear. There is nothing unique about what you are doing. No offense, I am so sorry, but it Get, this has been since the big. When were you born that you think that this is unique to you and has never been done before? This is my one thing with TikTok, right? Is that a lot of the content creators 
feel like that was the beginning and the start of everything, right? You see something online like, oh, this is some, uh, uh, you took this from someone from TikTok. No, because the world has been around for hundreds and thousands and millions of years. Nothing that is happening on TikTok is new or fresh. The app is, but the advice given out, the aesthetics, all, has been done before. It's all been done before. And especially, there's nothing unique about Sydney. So I don't mean to be rude, but there's nothing unique about her. The way she dresses, the aesthetic of this, there's loads of other people. You're buying things from Amazon. Millions of people have access to those things. You think that's unique? Sorry. Okay, pull it back in, pull it back in here. But if this is the case, if this ends up being successful, that means that anyone can, you know, trade dress any colour scheme. If I wanted to, I can trade dress purple and blue then, if, if this is the case. No one else is allowed to use purple and blue because it looks very similar to what I do. That would be insane. That would be absolutely insane. Oh. Ooh. But also not that style, what you wear, what you choose to sell, what you choose to put on social media would, would could be policed to a point where every single, think of the millions and millions, billions of people on social media who are wanting to become content creators or influencers would have to then have a unique style to everyone else. That's millions of unique styles. <laughs> Crazy. Let me hydrate here. Yeah. Oh, okay, listen, we, okay, I just said that. Let's, let's look at this, okay, so we have some, some court screenshots here. So on the left we have Sydney's content, on the right we have Alyssa. Now, that is literally, the, oh, is it a place though? I think it's a place where you can visit, but it's literally the same content at a different angle. Same outfit is very similar. Okay, I kind of see what we're saying here. And so this outfit in particular, it says flower clip and white boots do not come with a featured skirt and shirt set. Yes, I, I see that. I do see that. Okay, what do we have here? We have a shot of like living area, a coffee machine, pots on the side. Okay, yeah, I'm, okay, it, do, it does look very, very similar. So I do see the similarities there. Like, I, I mean, they're literally the same, right? They're li like the same outfit. Here's the deal. There's a difference between being like, I saw this outfit um on at this person, giving them not credit, but inspirational credit, I do think is important for, you know, things you're wearing, especially if the whole outfit is exactly the same. If she had just bought that skirt, you don't need to, you know, credit anyone, maybe the brand if you want to, but no one owns that, you know what I mean? Like, I do see that. If I was to create something that was exactly the same as someone else's, inspired by it, which I wouldn't, because I wouldn't do that, I would at least credit them for inspiration. At this, I saw at this person do this, I saw at Sydney do this. I get that. Sydney actually showed at least 50 examples of this copying, of alleged copying, and they're still doing the same things despite this being in court. So if this does end up being successful, Sydney is actually looking to claim damages for loss of engagement and loss of earnings. Loss of engagement, you can't do, especially on a platform like TikTok that just shoves everything in your face. Engagement is, is your priority, and I say that, not priority, your doing as, you know, a person. There are, there are millions of, of other reaction content creators, beauty content creators. I wouldn't sue someone for loss of engagement because we, we did a thing about the same story. You know what I mean? That's not how that works. You're either engaging or you're not. That's down to you. Loss of um, earnings through affiliate links, perhaps I can see that, but if they may, they would have to prove that a certain amount of their same followers are the same people that would have purchased through, what's her name, Alyssa? Yeah, through Alyssa's rather than Sydney's. So th these are very difficult things to claim. And she is also hoping for more legal precedence when it comes to protecting unique styles and aesthetics that influencers create. That's difficult because again, nothing she is doing is unique in general. When someone else copies her, it's definitely not unique then, but when, uh, I can understand being upset for someone copying you, but your style is not unique. You know what I mean? I think what, what should be the case is then there could be a law or a reporting system that actually works and people actually help with when it comes to someone directly copying you. Her style is, I can't say this enough, is not unique. It is in no way unique. I'm so sorry, Sydney. Lovely content, but it's not unique. You're doing a lot of what other people do anyway. And we have that as an example here of 20, 20 million is a rough guess of other beige content creators. There hasn't been an update on this yet, and it's almost been going for a year. There have been some lawyers uh, with concern for this, um, because they're still deciding whether it should or should not be, the courts are deciding, 
even let into court? Is it that much of an issue? Is it that serious? Is it even something you can judge? What do I do in courts? Court? Do court to? Here's, here's like my final thoughts on this, right? Everyone has that aesthetic. I'm so sorry, they do. You film in a room. Your your walls are most probably white. Your furniture is a malm from Ikea. It's white. You know what I mean? Your bed sheets, probably crisp and white or gray or some kind of neutral beige thing, right? If you just happen to film in your room, that's the whole aesthetic done. Everyone has that same thing. Not purposely trying to do so, it just happens to be where they live and where they can film. Sydney does not own this aesthetic full stop. Aesthetic? 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 I've probably been saying it wrong all the time. She doesn't own it, right? It's not the most exciting thing to own anyway. It's not like unique or, you know, it's not out, it's not like stand out in my mind, or oh, I must go back to this person's um, page because I love how unique the beigeness of everything they do is. Like I said earlier, not everything originated on TikTok. You did not come up with this aura of beige in your life. It's been going on for years. You can look at YouTubers, original YouTubers, when they do like decorate my something with me. It's, it's the same thing. What I do agree with Sydney uh, here is that some of Alyssa's posts were very, very similar, extremely similar to the point where she decided to put an outfit together that's exactly the same. That's where I do then have a problem without giving credit. There should be something in place where Sydney, in my opinion, is like, you know what, TikTok, this person has copied my post exactly, here are the points why, how unreasonable or how unmanageable that is, absolutely not. This beige aesthetic does not belong to Sydney, full stop. And if that goes to courts and she wins, then that's crazy, I'm gonna start copywriting every fucking colour vera. Please let me know your opinions down below. I can't be the only one thinking that this is not a, a unique aesthetic to Sydney. That's insane. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for joining me. Please, please do subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.